Lesson 5.6, we're talking about adding linear expressions. The objective is to add linear expressions. A linear expression is an algebraic expression in which the variable is raised to the first power. The table below gives some samples of expressions that are linear and some examples of expressions that are not linear. So, 5x, that x is raised to the first power. But in algebra, if you haven't figured it out, we really don't write our ones very often. So we don't have to write in that that's x to the first power. We just know it. If you look at the nonlinear expression, it's 5x squared. We have a 2 right there, which makes it nonlinear. When I talk about linear, that means if I were to graph a problem, it would not make a straight line. We'll get there further into your algebra careers, but for now, it's just knowing that linear is x to the first power, like these in this column, and nonlinear is x to any power other than 1. So it could be x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. All of those, when you graph them, they are not going to create a line. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add our algebraic expressions. So, number one, one of our algebraic expressions is 2x plus 3 plus x plus 4. So the first thing we do is say what are our like terms. So our like terms are 2x and x. We have another set of like terms, which are 3 and 4. Then we say, what are the coefficients of x? So we have a coefficient of 2, we have a coefficient of 1. Those are the numbers that are in front of our x's. So the first thing we're going to do is add our reds together. So 2x plus 1x is 3x plus, and then we're going to add our other like terms, 3 plus 4 is 7. Now 3x and 7 cannot be added together, so I just circle it, and that is my answer. That looks like Christmas. Okay, number two, remember these questions are down here to help guide you. If you need any assistance, that's what they're there for. The first thing I'm going to do is find what are, well, the first thing I'm going to do is go through and add the opposite. So it's all addition. It just makes it so much easier. So this becomes x plus negative 3. Then I'm going to do what are my like terms. So I have 6x and x are like terms, and I have 2 and negative 3 are like terms. So I'm going to do 6x plus x is 7x. Remember, there's a 1 in front of that x. And then 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1. So I have 7x plus negative 1. You could write it like this. You could also write it like this in the end. Either one is a correct answer. I'm going to circle it, and that's my answer. I need to use a different color, so it looks like Halloween, not Christmas. Okay, number three, I have 2x minus 1 plus x minus 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the opposites. So it becomes 2x plus negative 1 and x plus negative 5. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to underline my like terms. So I have 2x and x are alike. And then I have negative 1 and negative 5 are alike. I'm going to do 2x plus x is 3x plus negative 1 plus negative 5 is going to be negative 6. So I have 3x plus negative 6. Again, that could also be written as 3x minus 6. I am fine with either way you prefer. Number four, I have 2x minus 3 plus negative x minus 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through and add the opposites. So it becomes 2x plus negative 3 plus negative x plus negative 4. And then I'm going to underline my like terms. So I have 2x and negative x, and then I have negative 3 and negative 4, and then I'm going to add my like terms, so I'm going to do 2x plus negative x is x, because 2 plus negative 1 is 1, and then negative 3 plus negative 4 is negative 7, so I have x plus negative 7, or again I could write x minus 7. Either one is a correct answer. Okay, this is where we get to the stuff that I think is the fun stuff. 
So we get to use my one of my favorite properties before we go ahead and add them together, and that is the distributive property. So remember when I was like, you can't do well in this chapter unless you understand all the basics beforehand. That's what I meant. So we've got to use distributive. So we take 2 times x is 2x, and we distribute to everybody inside the parentheses. So 2 times 3 is 6. Now that was a separate group, right? So the 2 only gets distributed to what's inside those parentheses. So I have 2x plus 6 plus 3x plus 1. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to underline my like terms. So I have 2x is the same thing as 3x because they have the same variable with the same exponent. And then I have 6 and 1 are my like terms. And then I add my oranges, so I do 2x plus 3x is 5x, plus 6 plus 1 is 7. So I circle it, and 5x plus 7 is my answer. Okay, number 6. I have 3 times the quantity of x minus 8 plus 4x minus 5. First thing I'm going to do is add the opposite. Then I'm going to use distributive property. So 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times negative 8 is negative 24, plus 4x plus negative 5. Okay, then I'm going to underline my like terms, so I'm going to have 3x plus 4x. I have the same variable with the same exponent, and then I'm going to have negative 24 plus negative 5. 3x plus 4x is 7x. And then negative 24 plus negative 5 is negative 29. So I circle it, and that's my answer. Okay, 7 is a two-parter. The first part says write a linear expression in simplest form to represent the perimeter of the rectangle. So it really should say square because they're telling us that each of these sides is the same. So if we had a square and we're trying to find the perimeter, we need to add up all the sides. So we could do that a couple different ways. We could go 5x plus 1 plus 5x plus 1 plus 5x plus 1 plus 5x plus 1. But I personally think that seems a little redundant when there's a much simpler way that uses my favorite, one of my favorite properties, and that is the distributive. If we know we need to find, we need to add this together four times, we can just take four times the quantity of 5x plus 1. And then when we distribute, 4 times 5x is 20x, plus 4 times 1 is 4. So I get 20x plus 4 is my algebraic expression there. Now, they're telling us, the second part is find the perimeter if the value of x is 4 inches. So I take 20, plug in 4, plus 4. 20 times 4 is 80, plus 4, and 80 plus 4 is 84 inches. All right, 84 inches, circle it, and that's my answer.